this tutorial, we'll look at how to create animations in Figma with Smart Animate. Smart Animate is a surprisingly powerful animation tool that allows you to add motion and smooth transitions to your Figma prototypes without having to use other tools like Adobe After Effects or Principle. You'll typically use Smart Animate to transition between two screens in a prototype. So in this example, I'm going from screen A to screen B. And you'll notice a few different animations happen. For one, the logos all collapse into one towards the bottom of the screen, and then new content enters the screen, including an image, text, and a top navigation. This is all done with Smart Animate, and we'll look at how in this tutorial. So the first thing we'll animate are these logos and having them collapse towards the bottom of the screen. So to do that here in Figma, I'll actually duplicate this screen by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard. That creates a new frame. Then I'll carry over this title as well. Change that to Screen B. That'll be less confusing later. So one important principle when it comes to Smart Animate is that the element or elements that you're animating have to appear on both of the frames. So both the starting frame and the ending frame. So that means these logos that we're animating have to be present somewhere on screen A and screen B. And then effectively what you have to do is change the position or the properties of the elements that you want to animate on screen B and Figma will fill in the in-between. So in this case, the logos are collapsing towards the bottom of the screen. So on screen B, we want to move all of these logos or move the position of these logos towards the bottom. And we can do that individually by selecting one and dragging it towards the bottom of the screen. A quicker way would be selecting all of them and then here in the align options, selecting align to bottom. And that sends all the logos to the final position that we want them to appear. And now to animate that transition, what we can do is go to prototype mode here in the top right of Figma. And then we want to connect these two screens. So we can do that by selecting screen A, this frame, and then that should reveal a node here. And I'll click and drag on that node to connect these two screens. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about prototyping in Figma, I actually have a whole tutorial on this. So be sure to check that out if you're new to prototyping. It's really gonna help you with these animations as well. So if we keep going here, uh, once I connect those two screens, you can see this pop-up that has the interaction details on it. Um, so we're saying that on click, when the user clicks screen A, they're navigating to screen B, which is perfect. And then below in the animation details, Figma will typically be defaulted to instant. That's the type of animation. Uh, we'll actually change that over to Smart Animate. Um, and then there are a few additional properties here. So we can choose the type of transition. So it can be an ease in and ease out. Uh, I typically use ease in and out for most animations. Um, and then to the right of that, we have the duration of the animation, which I have at 500 milliseconds. So once we set this up, we can actually preview what this animation looks like. So I'll click the play icon here next to flow one. That will open up a preview. And now when I click anywhere on this screen, I can see the animation. The next thing we'll animate is that image that slides into screen B from the right. So what I'll do is scroll down here I'll copy the image from the final designs, and then I'll paste that image into screen B. And if you remember the important principle here, the element that we're animating needs to appear on both of the screens, on both the starting point and ending point of the animation. Um, so I'll also want to copy and paste this image on screen A as well. Um, and now what we can do is change the position of the image on the starting point um, so that it animates into the ending point. Um, and I'll just flip this back into design mode um, for simplicity here in Figma. And then what we can do with this image on screen A is actually push it to the right. And I'll do that with the mouse at first, and then I'll use the directional keys on the keyboard to fully remove the image from the screen. And then what we're saying is this image is gonna come in from the right and it'll eventually settle into its final position on screen B. And this is effectively another position animation. 
Um, so now we can go back into prototype mode and click on that play button to see what that animation looks like. The next animation we'll work on here is the text that appears above the image. So I'll go back to my final designs, I'll copy this text, and then I'll paste it on screen B. And now if we look at the final animation, we see that this text kind of fades in from screen A to screen B. And the way that we do that is through an opacity animation. And that essentially means we're, we're changing the opacity of the text from zero, where you can't see it, to 100 where it's visible on screen B. Um, so in order to do that, we also need to paste the same text on screen A. And then what we wanna do is knock down the opacity to zero. Um, and you can do that in Figma by clicking on the element you wanna change the opacity of. And then here on the right, in the layer section, we can change this 100% to zero. And that essentially makes the text invisible. Um, and now that we have the invisible text on screen A and the opacity at 100 on screen B, Figma will fill in that in between with Smart Animate. Um, so I'll tap on Prototype here in the top right and then click on the play icon and we can preview what that looks like. So now we can see that text fade in from 0 to 100. Now let's do a slightly more challenging animation where we combine a position and an opacity animation. And we'll actually do this with a navigation element that appears here at the top of screen B. So I'll copy that and then paste it on both screen B and screen A. And what we want this navigation element to do in terms of animation is slide in from the top and then we also want it to fade in from zero opacity to 100 opacity. Um, so we can do that by changing the properties of that element here on screen A. Um, so the first thing we'll do is actually move the position so it's outside of screen A. And that will take care of our sliding animation and having it come in from the top. Um, and then here in the layer properties, we'll change that opacity to 0%, which will create that fade in effect. Now if we go back into prototype mode, click on the play icon, we can preview what that looks like. As you can see, the navigation slides in from the top and it also fades in simultaneously. Now if we really want to make this animation feel more polished, what we can do is have each of these menu items come in at different speeds. Um, so we'll actually have a staggered animation where a boat moves in slightly slower than menu. Um, and in order to do that, I'll flip back to design mode here in Figma in the top right. Um, and then we want to go and change the position of a boat so it's slightly higher um, off the frame. And it'll just take a little bit longer to animate in. Um, so as you can see right now, you can't really see the navigation element that we dragged off the frame. Um, so in order to reveal that, I'll actually hit Command Y or Shift O on the keyboard. And what this does is it reveals the outlines or, or makes the outlines visible of your designs. Um, and this shows all the content that's actually on or off the frame. Um, so now I can see the menu items that we kind of dragged off the frame. And then I can also see the images that are off the frame as well. And I can even see that text that I knocked down to zero opacity. Um, and this comes in handy in, in circumstances or situations like this where we want to edit these elements um, that aren't visible within the frame. Um, so in this case, I'll drag to select the boat and then with the keyboard arrows, I'll just move that slightly higher so it just takes a little bit longer to animate in um, and that will create a nice staggered animation. Um, so I'll hit Command Y or Shift O on the keyboard um, to see the final designs and then I'll flip back to prototype mode and we can see what that staggered animation looks like. So as you can see, a boat takes slightly longer to animate in, which looks really polished.
The last type of animation we'll look at in this tutorial is a size animation. So what we want to do is create a third screen here in our prototype where the size of this image actually grows to occupy the top part of the screen. So to do that, we'll go back to design mode here in our, in our Figma in the top right, and then we can duplicate this frame here by holding down Option or Alt on the keyboard. Creates a new frame. We'll just give it a title here. So this becomes Screen C. I'll rename it here as well. And now what we want to do is get rid of all of these elements except for the actual image itself. Um, so I'll just select and then delete. And then all we have left is the image. Um, so like I mentioned, we want the size of this, of this image to grow to occupy the top of the screen. Um, so what I'll do is select the image and then I'll hold shift down on the keyboard to kind of constrain the proportions or, or keep the same proportions of the image and then I'll just drag it and then we can align it towards the top of the screen. Perfect. Um, so now if we go back into prototype mode, um, we, we actually want this animation to happen when the user clicks on the about element here. Um, so I'll just click that. That reveals the node here. And then I'll click and drag to create that connection. And then we can just review these interaction details here. Um, so when I click about, navigating to screen C, and then under the animation properties, um, we're using Smart Animate, which is perfect. Um, so now if we preview that animation, click on the play icon here, and then when I click about, we can see that the image grows to occupy the top of the screen. And just to finish up, I'll add a few final touches. So I'll go here to screen C. And I have some text that appears below the image. So I'll paste that onto screen C. And then we, we just want this text to simply fade in. Um, so I'll paste it on a screen B as well. And then if I flip back to design mode, I can knock the opacity down to zero. So that will have the text just fading in. Um, and then I'll also copy this close option here so users have a way of closing this screen. Um, and then if I go back into prototype mode, I'll just connect this back to screen B um, and make sure Smart Animate is on as well. So now if I preview that, we have a really clean animation there. The last thing I want to cover in this tutorial is how to trigger some of these animations within Figma. So, so far in this tutorial, we've been looking at animations that are triggered through click or tap. So when a user taps on screen A, they're going to screen B. Or when a user taps on the about link, they're going to screen C. But within Figma, you can actually change the interaction details so that these animations are triggered by different types of interactions. So for example, if I tap on on click here, you can see multiple options including on drag while hovering, which is useful for desktop prototypes. Um, and then this very last one, which is what we'll cover here, is after delay. And after delays is really useful because it allows you to trigger an animation after delay or a certain amount of time, which appears here to the right. Um, so what we're saying here in Figma is after 800 milliseconds, will go from screen A to screen B. And you can imagine this being really helpful when you're creating something like a loading screen. Um, so in this example, if we imagine screen A is the loading screen of this app, um, users will land on this loading screen and then after 800 milliseconds, they'll actually transition into screen B and that animation will happen automatically. Um, so what I'll actually do here is change that 800 milliseconds to 1500 just so that delay is a little bit longer, and then we can preview what that looks like here in prototype mode. Now, as you can see, without clicking or tapping, that animation happens automatically. 
And this is really helpful for as you're creating these animations and prototyping, if there's ever an instance where you, you don't want the user to do anything or have to click to actually reveal the animation, you can just use after delay and that animation will happen automatically. I hope you found this tutorial on Smart Animate and Figma helpful. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and then check out butteracademy.com for more information about our UX design course, which covers the fundamentals of UX design and includes tutorials and videos just like this one.